Hello everybody, my name is Ladislav and I prepare for you a series of videos about image analysis for AFM. I will start with Nanoscope analysis software from Brugger Operation and I prepare for today two lessons about two tools, how to compensate the tilt of AFM image and how to measure the distance on AFM image. Before I start, I need to tell something with basics about the software itself. So, let's start with it. Okay, uh, on the screen you already have the software open with some image loaded. The big uh, image here, that's your currently selected image for analysis with a parameter list for image itself but also for all tools we will use during the analysis. On the top there is a menu bar with all the functions, features, tools for analysis. On the right side there is the browse data files where you can see two files which we will work with, which are already open here and also open with all the channels if they consist any. So that's enough for today, later in some other video maybe, but I will start with the third compensation. So each AFM image which describe topography has some tilt. You can recognize it very easily that you can see here one part of the image is much darker comparing to the opposite corner. The reason is that the sample itself or the scanner during the measurement has some tilt and it affects the results. Before any further analysis you need to compensate for it. You need to, let's say, uh, remove the tilt from the measurement. Broker have a special tool, or oh, not special, it's common for every image, it's called flatten. Generally what you're doing it, you just take each line of your image, you fit a point on with a specific order, and you say hey let's move it to zero based on this point on. That's also the first parameter here in the list, and if I open it, you have a a lot of different orders. Let's start with the zero order. It means that you will fit the line, which is a zero order, so you will just t uh, apply an offset for each line and you move each line up or down based on the position that it will be on zero again. The average of the line will be zero again. Okay, that's the over, uh, average, but we need to compensate the tilt, and that's the first order. You fit a line, which is straight, but on the one side of the image, have a different position than on the other side. Just decrease that you have a line which is slightly going up or down, and that's the first order. You just fit the line, and then say, hey, just move the line back to zero, on the all positions. You can also apply higher orders, for example second, which is not a line anymore, it's some bow, it's a curve. So it will move, for example the middle will go up and the uh, edges will go down. You can apply it if your sample is so really curved, you are measuring some lenses or something like that, then it makes sense to use second or even a higher order. But generally be careful using higher orders because you can very easily introduce artifacts with your post processing of your image. So that's about the orders and let's do it and I will sh let's do it, choose the first one. We will ignore the rest of the parameters for now and just click execute. And you can see that the top of the it's already flattened, but it doesn't work for the high features. 
I will show you on some real sample. This is just the standard calibration grid. This is the sample from lots of Ekata for Czech Academy of Science. And the work, uh, the image looks nice. And if I will just uh, do the first or the flattening, just quick as you, you can see that it works very here in this region, but here is a very high feature which means that the average for each line is much higher. So you have a bright area, which is very high, and the dark area here. So this one oh, is one of the typical post-analysis issue when we are doing a flattening, when we are remove the tilt. How to do it? Just click with your right, hand, uh, right mouse. You can see that you uh, have selected the stop band. Stop band means that if you click the left mouse and drag, you just mark the error which will be excluded from the fit calculation. So if I will just click it, it's ex exclude the error used on this part of the images for the fit calculation and it looks nice as it should be. The same we can do here. We just need to mark each parameter and just go step by step. So, and you can see it works. It's very common mistake and based on the position of your feature on the image it can change the effect. So for example, this one, and you can see it's changing and making this kind of lines. If you will see this kind of lines on the AFM image, it means somebody don't know how to use correct flattening for the imaging, don't do that. So. If it's possible, like in this case, just mark all the specifically high or very deep features on your image, exclude it from the calculation and click execute. It will just change my cross case, so I will just manually change some offset and contrast. And that's it. We flatten the sample and we have here the substrate with some feature on it. To see better what uh, what's the sample is, I will use the second tool. It's called section. Uh, the section is the easiest way how to measure the distance and very easy. I just click with the left. Uh, button on the mouse and drag a line. You can already see the angle I'm using and also the distance. If I release, I got the profile. So right now it's time to talk about the sample because the sample is just silicon wafer or silicon oxide. On the silicon wafer with some also silicon oxide structures and that's the squared tops it's used for calibration uh, why for calibration because it's easy to measure uh, to prepare it and measure the sizes and it's uh, and done and if i will move these two markers to some position it will give me the information what's the distance between these two markers in the horizontal way yeah, 9.5 it's 10 micrometers so it's okay i don't thought exactly or between the vertical distance so you can see that's the plateau 
that's the quarter of the difference is 75 it should be around 75 so it's also okay this is way how to get some numbers if you know something uh, if you know now something about the sample you may be get an idea that it will be will be much better to use the, for the flattening or the position of the sample which are here at the bottom the substrate uh, typically you have a substrate and you have some nanoparticles on the substrate and you want to use or are else with the substrate for calculation yes as before as we here you can exclude the data manually but you don't want to do that for thousand particles it will not be even possible probably for that there is also some other parameters for flattening and it's called thresholding thresholding generally shows you what uh, shows you the points which are below or above some limit you can choose it if it's below or above you can choose if you want to calculate it for each line or for the whole image and then you choose the threshold height this is the number and show me hey all the data below 10 nanometers height it will be used for calculation you can also mark exclude the data and or you can use the histogram for measurement it takes some time for analysis on some computers which is unfortunate in my case so I prepare it here and it looks like this there is the histogram of all points with the height and you can see there is a one big peak here around the zero that's the substrate position then nothing and second peak that's the all tall features or the calibration hills let's say and what you are doing you just mark here the line on the 10 nanometers and we are using all points which are below 10 nanometers for calculation and all data which are above are just marked as a blue and you can see all the big features are marked but also few dust particles let's say are marked as blue and it will not be taken into account for calculation so that's just the way how to mark your data for fit and then again you choose which kind of fit do you want to do and again it will go line by line and make an tilt compensation based on the polynomial and that's it two options how to do it two options how to use line by line for measurement and get your image why i'm starting with these two tools so section and button that's our two most simple and most easiest way how to compensate the tilt of your sample and how to measure something if you want to have a quick analyze get your data that's the way for other tools see my next video thank you for attention see you next time